supposed to go and test it, right? And but we have not talked about the deformation characteristic. We don't talk about deformation. Actually, deformation means we actually need to do what pressure meter test. But for ball powering contracts, I can tell you for build so so many projects I see, nobody do pressure meter test. Okay, we all correlate. We all use in situ test. I hope you remember what is in situ test to correlate the strength and deformation. Okay. To calculate what negative thing friction, down drag, power shell friction, founding, that all blah blah blah, all this kind of thing. Okay, and even settlement. Now, what are the SI result and geotechnical parameter required? I already explained to you, right? Even you use alpha CU method, you definitely use the UU test result. You want to use the beta sigma prime method, you need to do the consolidation test to get the over consolidation ratio. Okay, so this you that's why I say actually this should not be the first workshop I do. The first workshop I do must be on soil investigation. Only you understand soil investigation, you can do geotechnical work. Because that's the most fundamental. You, you cannot understand soil investigation. I give you soil investigation report, you also don't know how to use it. I ask you to plan soil investigation, you also cannot plan. Okay, now review load test result. Okay, this is okay in Singapore context. Uh, we don't usually we submit the design first for approval, then we do the load test to check against our assumption, then do another amendment submission. Okay, but in actual fact, we can do the load test first, then do the design, then submit. But you know, ah. Uh, all our developer builder, uh, they are always short of time. They always say, can you do concurrently? So waste everybody time. Waste the designer time to redo the work. So and now what? The designer will do a very conservative design so that they don't need to do amendment submission. So if you are a builder or developer, you think you can save time by doing concurrently? Actually, you are wasting money. I'm telling you. Okay. Now, which load test to be carried out first? Ultimate or working load test? I think some people cannot understand this. Huh? I must ask. I must ask some senior people. Let me check. Huh? I must ask who? Huh? Let me see. Uh, I must ask. Okay. Okay. Xiu Hui, Xiu Hui. Are you here, Xiu Hui? You call for me, uh, you don't ask me <laughs> you, you, you help to safeguard our national reserve, you know. So you must answer this. So which one must we do first? Uh, I'm working, working, working load test. Uh. Huh? I just guessing, I guessing working load. You say do working load test. Uh. Then okay, another one I want to ask. Where is this? What? The, where is another LTA engineer? Where is the LTA engineer? Jia Ying. Uh. Is, the name is it Jia Ying? Kia Ying. Uh. Ah, Kia Ying. Yeah, Kia Ying. Is it Kia Ying? Yeah. Kia Ying, right? Hello, are you here? Hello. Miss Chan Kia Ying, are you here? Hello? Chang Kia Ying, are you here? No. Okay. No answer. Then I ask my I my RTO. Billy. It should be an uh, ultimate. Billy. Billy, Billy. Huh? Which one should we do first? Ultimate or working load? Billy. Hello, hello. Yeah. Ultimate or working load do first. Ultimate. Huh? Ultimate. Okay, good. <laughs> ultimate should do first, huh? Because ultimate we test until the power fail. Technically we want to fail the power. Okay? So that answer the first question the first question that asked. When the power had failed, doesn't mean that your design is wrong. 
So I will already answer. Huh? The answer is not true. Huh? Your power fail actually is correct. Huh? We want the power to fail in the ultimate test. Then we can get the so-called the mobilized shell friction or base resistance. Okay. Now. Okay, we don't need BC approval to carry out ultimate load test. Huh? Okay, this is important. Review the adequacy of founding or penetration debt. Remember, huh, this debt huh, must fulfill ultimate limit state and also service limit state. So it's always important to define what is competent short term. Go back to the just now on the church street. 66 out of 73 pounds did not anchor 5 meter into the competent short term. That is actual word in the legal documents presented to the judge. So competent short term become a very important legal term in the drawing. And in LL, in BCA submission, you need to define what is your competent short term. So what is a competent short term? And how do you determine the competent short term? Your, determine, your competent short term can be rock and can be different width of rock. You can say only G2 rock or G3 rock. Okay? It can be soil, it can be SPT 50 soil, it can be SPT 100 soil. My question to you now is how do you determine that on site? This thing must ask RE level. Anwar. Anwar, are you here? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, you celebrate your high raya already, huh? so you can answer. Come. How do you, okay, today I tell you, my competent short term is SPT 100 soy. How do you, and on site, huh? uh, your polling contractor, Kelvin, say, hey, we already reached SPT 100 already. You come and check, confirm, I can stop or not. How will you confirm? He he take up his uh his what uh pottery head or whatever, he give you the soil and show hey this is SPT 100 soil. How will you confirm is true or not? What you say is true or not? Yeah, you check the sample, uh, uh. then compare it to the uh ballock. Okay. Whether color or what. If the ballock showed 100 SPT is this color. Then uh. you see the sample, you feel the texture, then you can verify. Okay, you talk about color, you talk about texture, right? Density, all that. Density, yeah. Uh, I mean, is, is it compact or is it loose? Something like that. Hey, Kelvin, after you bore through soil, uh, you're using the bento nut, your soil come out. What is the texture like, you tell me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ah, uh, Kevin, you can feel the texture. Or maybe uh? color only la. Color, right? You say color, right? Yeah. Yeah. Color, right? Alex. Alex also saw investigation, uh? Alex, you hear? Alex Chan. Ah, Chan. Chan, uh? Hello, hello. You hear? Cannot answer me. Chan, can you hear me? Cannot. Hey, your Pukitima formation ah, all are brown color, you know. Whether SPT 30, 50, 100 ah, all same color, you know. So how do you know it's SPT 100, not STP, not... How do you know it's SPT 100 and not 99? You tell me. Anwar, so how? Uh... But uh, Bukit Timah, you can see when the soil is dry, uh, mm. I know it's quite hard. Uh, mm. But it, when it's wet, uh, mm. it's really, really soft. Uh. Mm. But so you look at uh, Geelang formation, as uh, example, uh, mm. uh, we, you can see after the marine clay layer up to the 100 SPT strength type of soil, uh, mm. you can see and I, I think it's from experience. Uh, you can see and feel the difference. Uh. You like that experience. You go to court. Uh, you say you have experience. You already go inside already like that. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, you take the undisturbed sample from the from the you know storage area. Ah. Uh. And compare. Yeah, I'm telling you, you have the SI sample you keep on site. Then he take up after he bought the pile, he passed to you. All like all like the mark like that, he tell you this SPT hundred. So how you accept or don't accept? Um, uh, compare, compare, try to compare with the sample from the storage area. Yeah, nah, you compare with you, what? Color is the same. Color is the same. Huh? Mm. So accept or don't accept? Or continue asking to drill to the center of the earth? <laughs> See your design length, how many first? Lah? Yeah, he said which design length already? De design length already. Uh. Yeah, he Maybe said he want to stop already. He read design length already. He want to stop already. He he reached SPT hundred. Ask you to confirm counting the socketing length already. You stop or don't stop? Oh, socketing ah? Uh, you mean you reach the hard layer lah? Yeah. Hard so layer. he said this is the start counting from here now. This is SPT hundred. Hmm. Okay. Eh, not sure. <laughs> like that? How? You already SRE right now? <laughs> Below you all the IRTO, you know. <laughs> okay, gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. You can see, ah, uh, designers are uh, no designer. You think why wow, you very happily design the pile very nicely, wow, five six meter into SPT hundred. Actually, on site they don't even know they actually reach SPT hundred. You know that. I use a live demonstration for you to see now. The RE. And the prime conductor, both of them cannot tell you they actually read SPT hundred. Okay. Okay, ah, uh, so you know about the risk, ah. Uh. Now, if you remember the church street, this RE who is charged by BCA, how come sixty six out of seventy three of pound never reach the thing, reach the competent short term? There's only two possibility. First, he, ne he totally negligent. He never supervised at all. Okay? He never followed drawing. He intentionally or unintentionally never followed drawing. Second possible reason is he made the wrong judgment on site. Okay? He and the piling contractor make the wrong judgment on site. This is only the two possible reasons only. Correct? Now, it's also beyond my scope now to tell you how to determine the competence short term. Actually, I'm quite disappointed with Anwar. Anwar, you follow me a few years. Those people who work with me on deep in LTA project will know. I always share many times on how to do this kind of thing. Okay, I got no time now today. I will move on. The last item to for the checklist is review the ground condition as site and test result for the design and construction of power foundation. Okay? Now, method. Why they want to say that the con condition on site and test result for the design and construction? We have, I already said the construction method will determine the performance of our power, right? In, in the Euro code, also talk about ball power without permanent casing. The effective area will have to reduce by 20 to 50. So designers should consider workmanship and execution in design of power. What does it mean actually? I give you one real life example. In one project I did, the ultimate load test, they use a dry boring method. Meaning that they only use casing, they never use bentonite because the ground the soil able to stand on its own and they cast and they do the test. Results are good. Then when they do the actual piles, uh, they found that they cannot do it dry. They have to use bentonite. Do you think they will behave the same manner? I must ask that. Well, sorry, I, Kevin, you are the only piling contractor. Yeah, okay, no problem. So do you think they will perform the same manner? I think for wet pile, the area will be slightly bigger compared to the dry pile. Bigger, okay. So the yeah. then how about the friction and the bearing? 
bearing for wet pile should be lesser because uh, the toe you unable to clean hundred percent mm. for wet pile. Mm. Decent, eh? Yeah. Uh, friction definitely will be less oh, for wet mm. pile. So you hear that, huh? Actually, you got a weaker performance pile by changing from dry to wet construction, right? Not I say one, huh? Pauling contractor say. Pauling contractor themselves admit one. See this point? So this is the thing. This is what BCA is concerned. BCA want you to check the construction method. Is it correct? Is it tally with your assumption or not? Okay? Not to say that dry have one parameter, wet has another parameter. Okay? Not to say that, huh? Now, you go through this checklist. Okay, this is what I'm talking for. Those people, students, students, you have not seen a ball powering machine, never see ball powering, how it's done. This is a, a, a very simple diagrammatic presentation. Okay, they do a casing, then they build through, they use betonite to stabilize the hole. Okay, then they cast, then they put rebar, then they withdraw the whole casing. Huh? Simple as that. Now, real life example, huh? real life 